Andrew, welcome to the cave. Thank you for joining me today. Excited to be here. I love uh, Zoom caves. Hey, uh, uh, you know, listeners and viewers can see the newest project on Apple TV Plus, uh, Platonic, uh, with Seth and Rose. Uh, I watched the first two episodes over the weekend. Uh, I enjoyed it. I love a good comedy. What's yeah. your thoughts on what's your thoughts on all this uh, of the series so far? What's my thoughts on this? I'm actually watching as a fan because, yeah. like, this is my first time acting in something. So it's like I I don't know why I didn't even think about this, but like. You know, I just see my scenes I'm shooting and now like and then I watch the show and I'm like, I'm actually interested in in the show. Like I would be a yeah. fan if I wasn't in the show. Uh, I love it, man. I think it's like, you know, I I also just can't believe anything gets made. So it's like it's like I could barely read a book. So <laughs> when I see that just people finished a TV show, I'm like, it could be the worst show ever. And I'm pretty much like, I don't know, it's pretty good. Like, I don't know how they did that. But this yeah. one, this one, I'm legitimately like stoked on, and I and I, I don't know. I, it's a breezy, fun watch. It makes me laugh, and there's nobody better than Seth and Rose. I mean, that chemistry is it's crazy. You know, like right, it's right. it's so charming. We're gonna we're gonna jump more into the, the series in a few minutes, but you know, I was like I said, I was doing some research on you. You know, you've done a little bit of everything. You know, of course, stand up comedy, uh, acting now, producing, director. I tricked everybody. You tricked everybody. Tricked what was the everybody. first was stand up for the first goal? No, my first goal is to be uh, uh to to make movies. Like I just cuz I grew up in a small town in Iowa and like I just wanted to I just loved movies. I wanted to make movies. Mm. And it was Men in Black when I was 7. I saw Men in Black when I was 7 and I was like I want to do that. I want to make Will Smith killing aliens, you know. Yeah. Um I grew up in this small town like that was a uh, it was called Pella, Iowa. That was incredible. I loved it. But like I was like the only like Asian kid in that town. And so when I saw Men in Black, I wasn't a genius or anything, but I like understood the idea that like Will Smith was actually kind of the alien, like infiltrating like all, all white, you know, like agency as the black dude. And I was like, I do that like every day um, <laughs> at, at grade school. And so like, you know, I I just had this feeling of like I want to do that. I want to make giant movies that kind of like speak to me in that way, but also like it's about aliens and stuff. And um, I didn't know anybody in Hollywood. So like naturally, as I grew up, the only way I knew how to get my first step into making movies was yeah. in Iowa was stand up. So that's how I started. It was like, well, if I want to make movies, how can I get there? And I was like, I'll go to the comedy club because there's like movie stars going to do stand up there. And then I started doing stand up with the hope that it would lead to making movies. And that's wow. kind of the goal. But and then I kind of, you know, it was also like the mid aughts when I started stand up. So it was like Aziz was like new on the scene and Kumail Nanjiani and, and Amy Schumer. And so it was like the cool hipster comedy boom. And yeah. it was all kind of good timing for me to start that, too. You mentioned the comedy booms. How like, uh, you know, we went off the air. Also, we we're talking about comedy. Uh what a big difference between the comedy world back then now, back then compared to now. Oh, dude, comedy, I mean, everything in the world changes so fast. Like, even when I moved, I moved to LA in, in 2012, like comedy from when I started stand up in LA in 2012 to comedy in 2015 was different, let alone comedy 2015 to comedy now is crazy different. And it's so weird. And I don't know, I just, I feel old and I'm, I'm 33 and I, I couldn't feel older, like, like around some comics now, but yeah, it changes so fast. I don't know. What do you like? Do you like, do you miss the old comedy, the old comedy scenes or do you like the new? The I mean, new I, mean I like both. And also, but the late, the last album that I listened to, it's about a year old, but Dane Cook released the newer one. Did you see that yeah. one or hear that one? The one he did yes, in like his did. backyard or something. Yeah. And that was, that was actually pretty funny. I liked it. I also yeah. liked it. I thought, dude, Okay, so are you like being this too? Because I'm in that generation where I remember sitting in like a shitty like Pontiac Sunfire outside of my friend's house in like 2001 listening to like Harmful of Swallowed on like a CD right. and just dying laughing at Dane Cook talking about the Kool-Aid man. Right, right. Like, and this last Dane Cook album kind of felt, I don't know. It I felt like that. It felt it. like that, like the original one. Yeah, man. And like, I don't know. I think that Dane Cook, there is like a a comeback TV show or like a prestige FX show you could probably do with Dane. Because like, yeah. I don't know if you remember like Dan in real life, that movie or like. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, killing or Mr. Brooks. Oh, like, yeah, that was great. Dude, and yeah. he's good at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just, I, I, it just seems like, you know, he's well, he became huge with MySpace, if you remember that. And then he, he sold out Madison Square Garden. Okay, this is fun to talk about. That's the other thing about, like, you're going back to your question about comedy back then. Like, Dane Cook, to give Dane Cook his flowers, how people get big in comedy now, like the TikToks of the world and the, yeah. you know, the YouTube stuff of the world, whether you like, if you call that actual stand-up comedy or whatever you want to debate, that is the be- easiest medium to, to blow up. Hmm. Dane Cook is the first person to do that shit. He right. invented that model. So every right. TikTok in the world needs to give their flowers and thank dane cook for blowing up social media comedy because he he started that shit that's awesome yeah i mean i i I saw him before he became huge i i'm from massachusetts so i would see him in boston yeah and uh it was like even when going to those shows it was just he sold out are you or so are you like also like a like so like they's like patrice was from there too right like patrice i think he was new york new york and then like yeah there was a whole vibe though. Like I remember like all those stories of that East coast, like Massachusetts right. comedy, yeah. like, like Robert was, Kelly. I don't know if you heard yes. of him. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, that that's, was a whole, there's a whole, yeah, it was, it was crazy. The comedy scene back then. Do you feel like then for you too, especially like, you know, in, so into pop culture now and like meeting all of these people and talking to all these people and getting all the inside scoop. How do you feel about like the new boom of, of, you know, I, I would say like the Dane Cooks of the world that are now like mm-hmm. are, let's say like whether they're Theo Vaughn or, you know, like uh, Andrew Schultz, like uh, the medium is through podcasting. It kind of feels like, do you feel, uh, is that exciting for you or do you miss the old like Dane Cook explosions? I, I miss those type of explosions, but also like, it's also fun to s- listen to those podcasts where they get like the old school comics that come on and they talk about how comedy has changed in the world also. Yeah. I do love those interviews too. It's going to be funny in the days or like in 10 years from now, when they're having Joe Rogan on somebody's like virtual right. reality headset. And he's like, back in my day, you used to listen to me. <laughs> like right. it's, it's so weird how that shit. Yeah. I, I totally agree. It's, and it's also weird. Some of this like second life resurgences that people are getting. Like, I like, I love Bobby Lee. I've always loved Bobby Lee. He's, yeah. he's been around forever. And I love seeing that, He's got a second, you know, almost explosion again in his life outside of the Hollywood mm-hmm. system in the way he wants. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's like, it just shows that like, like going back to your original question that like uh, things always change. And I think what's more interesting than comedy itself changing is that we have to see that the people playing, like we as creatives need to change with it. Like that's mm-hmm. the more real thing as opposed to, Caring about comedy changing, we need to we need to change with comedy. Right. Now, all the years that you've been performing and when you've been going to the clubs and everything, uh, who is like the like sometimes you get like those surprise guests that show up just to do a set. Which yeah. one were you excited about when you first saw him or her go in? Man, when I first started out here, I mean Sandler is an all timer. Like, yeah, Sandler is an all timer dude like i there's just something about like i want to be sandler you know i want to be like him like in the way that like he loves his wife and his kids he seems yeah. like he's always having fun and uh he's so humble and like he i don't know he's silly but like and i just grew up with his movies but i remember i was at the west side comedy theater and i think this was like 2013 or 14 in santa monica it was like an open mic and i was a nobody comic it was like a bucket you know and I think there was like 40 comics or something. And I was like 30 on the list. And yeah. you're tired if the mic starts at like 10 p.m. And Sandler was, you know, just coming back to trying Santa for the first time in a long time. And he lived in Santa Monica at the time or close by it. And he just showed up and was and waited. He like yeah. waited until the right time to go up. He let him, he watched some people. And I remember seeing that and being kind of like, whoa, like I, you know, I could move home at that point and be like, mm-hmm. I, I made it to LA and that was cool. The second one that made me feel that way was 20. Also, I think 2013, 2014 at the Laugh Factory, I got bumped by Blake Griffin, the NBA. Uh, at the time. He tried stand up. I don't remember. He was trying that. stand up. And I think that was also a fun bump because it was a reminder. It was the, the evidence of the comedy boom. 
And it was also a reminder that you have to be good at it. Like it was that thing. It was like, oh, like, you know, comedy is sacred. Like I was like, mm-hmm. you can't just be like a hot basketball player and think you're funny. Like, and right. it was a good reminder for me being like, I could keep going. Like so. I can't dunk a basketball, but I, at least I can make the crowd laugh. So like you bumping <laughs> me, Blake Griffin gave me some hope. And right. as a fan, thank you. Um, but those were the two first bumps that I'll never forget. Mm. Awesome. So yeah, so let's jump now into into your. Uh, you said you this is one of your first acting gigs, uh, Platonic. Uh, we see mm-hmm. you as Reggie. Uh, tell us a little about your audition. How were you approached for this series? Man, this is a fun. You're the first. Thank you for asking this question. You're the first person to ask me this question, and I haven't talked about this yet. But it's kind of a long winded, weird universe story. I'm one of those people that like believes everything happens for a reason, kind of guy. But one of my first jobs in 2014 was I was the writer's assistant for the writers that wrote neighbors. And I, it was my first like creative writer's job. And I was at it getting coffee for like Seth and Nick and uh, Andrew Cohen and Brennan O'Brien, who I was the assistant to. And Brennan O'Brien's my mentor now. And one of my favorite people on earth, an incredible person. And I was getting them coffees while they were writing neighbors too. I was just like, in the background. Like, I don't think anybody yeah. like knew my name and I was just soaking that all in and I couldn't even believe I got to be around them, but I was a, an assistant. And then, you know, later in life, I, you know, moved on and like, you know, I started, I, you know, I got signed at UTA as a writer of myself. And then I, you know, went on tour with Joe Coy as a comic. So I had like kind of started my own career and I also wanted to act and, and Brendan was still my, my mentor as a writer, but, um, you know, as the assistant for neighbors in 2014, I think it was 20, you know, whatever it was last year, 2022, January, 2022, I get an audition for a self tape from my on, from my agent for platonic. And a self tape is like the bottom of the barrel of auditions. Like sometimes I don't even think the casting director wants to see you when you get a self tape. It's just like (laughs) your agents trying to like, they wanted to see our other clients. So let's just have him put himself on tape at his house with his room. Like one of my roommates read in my living room while he was playing like the UFC video game. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like doing it on my phone. And I, I'm sure my agents just sent it because they wanted me to feel like they were caring about me. But it was yeah. Seth Rose and Nick Stoller. The neighbors crew was getting back together for Reggie. And I was like, well, I used to be an assistant for these guys. I put myself on tape. I, because was around Nick and Seth when they were writing neighbors too, kind of knew the ins and outs of what they look for, like how to improvise in their world, um, watching them do it on, on set and watching them do it in the writer's room as an assistant. And so I kind of like sprinkled that knowledge in there, uh, sent my tape in. And then Brendan called me like three weeks later and was like, dude, I was just with Nick. And they called me and they were like, I think your old assistant just auditioned for Protonic and he's good. <laughs> And I then read with Seth the next week. And then uh, I think Seth's first word when I got on the Zoom to to read with Seth was, it's been a long time. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of this weird serendipitous, like as an assistant for Neighbors and Neighbors 2, coming back around again and being an actor on Platonic. But them not asking for me, it was just, you know, I auditioned just like everybody else and it, it made its way up to the top. And wow. um, pretty, pretty cool. Now the big question is, have they asked you for any input for the show? Any writing or any? uh... That's okay. This is the greatest thing about working with everybody on this set. Um, All the creatives, all the people that are making it the all the way from the editors to the PAs to to obviously the tops of the creatives with Seth Rose, Francesca and Nick is that it is a very collaborative place. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the scripts that were written that we got and the ways that it was like set up to be shot. Um, everything that we got to shoot as actors was already like a plus comedy material to me. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, it like the scripts were making me laugh out loud by myself, you know, in my bed, reading them at night. And, and then let alone seeing Rose and Seth then act out what was on script in, in person. And then having Nick and Francesca direct that. And it, it was, it was already like, a plus stuff but then after we shot 
the scripted stuff, they Nick always let us play. So like I got to improvise awesome. a bunch, you know, with Seth and Trey and Vinny, the other cast members and Carla. And it was great. It was it was a dream come true. It was getting to do prepared, written A plus comedy material. And then the people who are A plus comedians allowing me to yeah. add my own at the end. And um, I I don't know if I'll ever have a better job. And, and I think sure. it also taught me and hopefully anybody else listening to like to be collaborative because that's that's where the funniest yeah. stuff comes from is is being that that open you mentioned trey trey is funny trey oh is god awesome. trey is awesome he's like he's like yeah. become like one of my best friends from i met him on the show um and we literally talk every day shout out trey hale he i'm like he's gonna be in my wedding he'll stand that's as awesome. a group. like we i love that man and he and i i'm I'm blessed to, to get to do the show with him. He's a, he's going to be a movie star someday. Like he's going to lead a Marvel movie. I think he'd be a good villain for a superhero movie. He's got that villain look. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Hot villain guy. <laughs> so uh, for Reggie now, uh, what was the description you were given for Reggie when you, uh, when you got the role? Reggie um, was, was pretty much what, it, what, um, what he is now. It's, he was the, he was always like this kind of like, you know, investor dude that is yeah. the the stepbrother to Seth's character's ex-wife that was always in there um I think the original script stuff that you know me Nick Seth Rose and, and Francesco were kind of exploring after I got the role was the original version of him was a little more brash I think a lot more bro and investor you know let's link and build type dudes yeah. um and then something that we all worked on together was kind of bringing a little bit of that you know and as you guys keep watching like as the season goes a little bit more of a a groundedness to like maybe a lot of this is overcompensating for wanting to actually be that you know like it's almost like um you know uh you know dressing for the job you want and I think a lot of like young investors are, you know, anybody on Robin Hood knows that like, you know, I, I, I say I'm an investor, but really I'm, I'm playing with like, you know, child's money, you know, this isn't Goldman and Sachs. So it's like, uh, and I think um, bringing that, uh, that vibe to Reggie came out um, after I got cast and, and, but it was always an investor kid and then trying to bring like a little bit of the fun, like, Maybe uh maybe he doesn't actually know what he's doing with his right, money. Right. Well, um, didn't they isn't one of the first scenes they yell at you like get out of here, you're just the investor or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You could you could uh defraud Seth Green out of NFTs if you want. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. That was that was uh that was all Seth's improv too. Like wow. and um I remember walking on set that day, it was one of the first things we shot, and I was so nervous and Seth started improvising right away, and I was like, Oh, okay. Seth Seth's improvising is 50 times better than what takes me 25 minutes to think of. Like mm -hmm. he, it was right into the line of fire with him and, and I appreciated it and it was, it was crazy, but that was a, an improvised line from Seth right away on the first day. Right. So, so like uh, throughout the series now, like what do you hope like the audience is going to remember like about your performance in the show? You think? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody's going to remember me. Uh, because I think everybody else is so good. Like I, I just hope people remember me in general. Um, I think uh, I hope that people would like out of Reggie. I, 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 you know, everybody was so funny, and I, everybody was funnier than me. I thought that my choice that I was making on set day to day as we were shooting was like mm. I was gonna try to be a little more character emotionally funny as opposed to like hard comedy funny. So like later on in the season, you know, there are some lines that Reggie has that are like really like he's really hurt or he's really angry or he's really like emotional. And yeah. instead of like trying to go for the funniest line, I just was like, what if I was like the Paul Giamatti of this scene? You know, like what <laughs> if I, like very earnestly felt yeah. hurt and like very earnestly was angry. And um, to try to cut against me not being as funny as everyone, maybe go more dramatic. So like, mm. um, I haven't seen it. So I, I'll be interested to see how I play, but I don't know. I went a little more dramatic and I hope that, um, I don't know. I just hope people will remember me so I can get another job someday. 
<laughs> well, if you're hanging out with Seth Rogen, he's gonna he's he's gonna tag you along. He's gonna put you in. Some I hope so. I hope so. Your your words to Seth. Right. I hope also. I just want to hang out with Seth Rogen. Actually, that's all I hope for is that I hope I get to hang out with Seth again. <laughs> so, like, uh, also this show, you know, like one of the biggest themes I I believe is friendship. What's your thoughts? Friendship. What else am I missing here? What else gives the biggest theme? You think to the series? Um, communication. Which is, I guess, part of good friendship, you know, because mm-hmm. I think the show doesn't really it's like so it's like, I don't know about you, but I'm one of my best friends is a platonic woman, you know, a woman I'm in a platonic best friend relationship with. So I relate to the story a lot. I was a bridesmaid in her wedding. Oh wow! <laughs> and so I, I, you know, I and the thing about it, too, was like. I think that the show explores a lot of like you have to be communicating with the people that you love and care about um, and be honest with that stuff. And, uh, and on the other side of that, as a receiver of communication, you have to also have boundaries and also voice those boundaries and communicate if you trust the person or not. And I think that the Mm -hmm. the series really explores uh, earnest communication and how to do that um, in a, in a not heavy way, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a very relatable emotional theme uh, that is presented very uh, breezy in a good way, which I think is something we need nowadays. But um, and also it's like another big theme I think Platonic uh, explores is um, uh, chemistry because uh, not even just as like a, a thematic in the show, but also like. I just want to see more things where people are fun to watch together. Like when Harry met Sally, like, I don't know. Sometimes I'll watch show. I don't know if you feel this. Sometimes I'll watch shows or like movies and I'm like, these people don't seem like friends. Like what is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like the, yeah. the math book of, of friends, you know, like, right. I'm like, I think this was like a, like a societal choice as opposed to actually chemistry so i think platonic actually feels like these people are friends mm. and that's the front and center how, uh, how many episodes are we expecting the first season is it eight eight ten ten, ten, ten. full blown episodes baby and they're and they get funnier each time yeah now uh do the writers have another plan for season two if we see a season two has there been any word yet on season two do you know there has not been word yet so please watch it you you and and everybody mm. Just keep put it on replay so we can just keep getting just keep the, looping it, get the hits. Yeah. Yeah. While you're interviewing me, turn it on right now. Yeah. But um, I I hope there's a season two. I I this the series does lend itself to a season two, but it again, Nick, Seth Rose, and Francesca and, and the writers and producers are are geniuses to me. And like I I love everything they've done. And and this is no, you know, this isn't any different with Platonic, but the the ending is it's open for season two, but also like it ends in a way that I think people are going to be really satisfied, you know? And um, so whatever happens, I I'm proud of the season one. And if it's only season one, that's dope. But I think people are going to keep wanting to watch Rose and Seth hang out. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, be- I believe we'll see another season. Yeah. I hope so. Also, I, I need to buy a new car. So right. well, you got to start <laughs> now. You got to get and start trying to ride a neighbor's three. You'd be good to go. Yeah, dude, that would be, yeah, we should do it. I mean, that's a good, I think it's time for a Neighbors 3. I I love Neighbors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was hilarious. The what second one, I think. The second one was better than the first one, I think. And they're both good. You know what Neighbors 3 could be? It could be Parents Weekend. You know, the parents there come back in town for Parents Weekend. We'll sell it right now. <laughs> so well, what's next for you now? Any of the projects you'll have to tell us about? Or you got a little tour coming up or what? I have a really cool thing I can't talk about that comes out very soon. Um, but I just, I know that's such an ominous, stupid way to thing to say, but, um, I'm really excited about something that's coming out. That's a surprise. And, and I'm, I'm, it's a dream come true job as well. And that comes out in the next month or two and, um, people will see that. And then I, uh, and then I'm just writing a lot. I'm writing, uh, you know, the strike is happening now. So WGA solidarity, hopefully they figure that stuff out. Um, but you know, um, just trying to focus on, uh, on that stuff and then also like uh trying to do yoga more so that's what's coming up there i'm trying go. to got a couple of yoga classes this week <laughs> try to get uh, hot andrew now how can the listeners and the viewers uh find you on social media keep up with you for news for comedy photonic yeah. and, and your surprise project um i'm at the andrew lopez on instagram 
But more so than that, just tweet at us too, because I think you and I should write Neighbors 3 together. Who cares about me? Who cares about my social media? There you go. I think all your listeners should just start tweeting at you that we should write Neighbors 3 together. That's that's the thing that we should talk about. And then we'll tag Seth Rogen. Maybe he'll be up for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll text him. Yeah. There you go. I don't have a number. You buy it. I don't. <laughs> we'll do it together. There you go. Uh, Andrew, this is great. Uh, let's get you back on. Talk about your next project. Uh, and anything yes, else. And, uh, yeah, this went great. Thank you.